Okay, I am reading the story now. Like I said before, I will read the story twice. Again, I am not reading the full story. I am leaving out a couple of sentences. It is a very small story. Some of the stories are very long, so I can't tell you who will get a long story and who will get a short story. Here the theme is dependence on media. Is our dependence right or is it wrong? This is what we are going to read here. A man, this name of the story is, there are such men indeed. There are such men indeed. And there is an exclamation mark. That means this is being used sarcastically. You know, such people are also there. Today we find that more such people, maybe not 100 years back, not many, today more of this variety. A man said to his friend, of course one thing I forgot to tell, you know when I said brother, brother, they are not brothers these three fellows, they are friends because the first tells us, the first line tells us three friends went through a forest. So, they were only passing through the forest, they were not going to the forest, they were going through the forest. See, such a small word makes such a difference. Are you noticing all these things? These are very important for you. So, here, I don't know, somebody might have mentioned that they are brothers, but that's not true, I don't remember clearly. A man said to his friend, I have just seen a house fall down with a terrible crash. Now, the friend to whom he told this had received an education. He said, just a minute, let me look it up in the newspaper. He read the paper but could not find the news of the house falling down with a crash. Thereupon he said to his friend, well, I don't believe you. It isn't in the paper, so it is all false. Do you get the story's meaning? Should I read it once more? The second reading is always to look at the words, to look at the grammar, to look at the structures. This is why first time we understand meaning. The meaning is that many people believe something, they think whatever I know is best. Whatever I read in the paper or whatever I see on media, that is only correct. All what you are saying is wrong. That attitude is called fanaticism. You know, whatever I think is right, whatever you think is wrong. Big word. It is used usually in religious context, but we can use it in other contexts also. I love this leader. I hate this leader. I love this country. I hate this country. These kind of strong opinions, whatever you tell me, I will not believe you. That kind of strong opinion is not correct. If somebody tells you something, you must evaluate it, you must judge it, you must measure it. Is it right or is it wrong? Then only you should say, you should not say, I don't believe you. That kind of a thing is not correct. Today most people are doing this. You know, because of social media, problems are increasing and increasing. Social media has many good points. It has many dangers also. We should take what is good. We should try to reduce what is dangerous. Everything has good points. So we should make it to good points. You know, a lot of online, like you were saying, online courses are there, online assignments online chat groups. These are wonderful for improving your communication. You can Im increase your ideas because somebody will tell you something else. But when it is used for spreading propaganda, for spreading rumors which are not correct, then media becomes very dangerous. Do you see how this story tells us? I will read it for you once more. A man said to his friend, I have just seen a house fall down with a terrible crash. Now, the friend to whom he told this had received an English education. 
he said, just a minute, let me look it up in the newspaper. He read the paper but could not find the news of a house falling down with a crash. Thereupon he said to his friend, well, I don't believe you. It isn't in the paper, so it is all false. Is that clear? Good morning everyone. I am Mahek and the theme of the story is dependence on media. Basically, mm -hmm. as we all know that nowadays each and everyone is dependent on media and media plays very important role in everyone's life. That it may be social media or any media. We all even know that it has advantage as well as disadvantage. It is necessary for us to take it an advantage and use a social media in a good way, but not in a bad way. So here, the title of the story is, There are such men indeed. Here, a man said to his friend, I have just seen a house fallen down with a crash. Oh my God, that's a big thing. Falling a house, it may also cause injuries to many people. So the friend who is a well-educated, nowadays everyone is educated, says that, just a minute, let me check in the newspaper or any media. So he just uh, opens the newspaper and searches the news wherever uh, it is given that the house has been crashed. So he sees and he says that, no, it's not there. I don't believe you. Everyone can come and give the fake news. How can I believe? It's not the correct thing to believe each and everyone. We need to search. It is fake or it is correct news. We need to find it out. So uh, he says that I don't believe you. It is not in the newspaper. Uh, mainly the moral of the story is uh, we all know that everything is not published in the newspaper or any social medias and all. There are even some hidden news which you know cannot come into media. Uh, not only this, even in some small villages it cannot come and all. So search the news, go find it out and then believe. Thank you. Okay, very good. Good morning one and all. I am Hemant Kumar Sharma. The title of the story is, There are such men indeed. The story begins when a man witnessed a house falling with a terrible crash. And he just narrated the story, the same story to his friend. The friend was an educated man and uh, he tried to check, check in the newspaper to uh, you know, cross check about the news. He, he was unable to find any news in that regard. So uh, he said that this is a fake news or this is a false news. The theme of the story is dependence on media. And the story puts light on the fanatics who just dance to the tunes of media. Thank you. Very good. Give a clap. Nice clap for group two. Now this story was a little complicated. I think some of you thought that depending on media is the good thing and believing a person who sees it is not good. That is not the idea of the story. The idea of the story is that when we have an eyewitness, we don't believe, but we believe media, which is a third person, it is a far away, something far away. So whether it is media which comes in one minute or media which comes next day, suppose I say that I saw the house falling yesterday, then you say, no, I don't believe you. I will first check the newspaper. Then that is where the idea of the story is that it is very risky for us to believe everything which the media tells us. We should have the ability to discriminate. Discriminate is a word that is to be able to know what is right and what is wrong. Discrimination is a very important concept. It's a very important part of our values, an important part of our skills to be able to discriminate, to choose what is correct and what is not correct. Sometimes what is not correct seems more attractive, but we need to choose from there. So if somebody is seeing with their eyes and telling you that I have seen this, then you don't need to wait on a 
news from somewhere which is different. Recently, we had quite a few incidents in Hyderabad. I am sure all of you are aware of those. We were so much dependent on what the media was telling us. And if you watched five different news channels, you were getting five varieties of news. It was not a single variety of news. And then there were comments about this on social media. And each comment dependent on the person's thinking. Somebody says it is right, somebody says it is wrong. So as a human being, which side will you take? Or will you see that this person has some good points and some faults? The other person also has some good points, but there are some flaws here also. This ability all of us have, that is called critical thinking. It's a very, very important skill all of you require. We have lost critical thinking. You must remember that in India, thousands of years ago, people had critical thinking because if you published a book, there would be hundred commentaries on that book. Nobody would agree with the author only. In fact, our Vedas are authorless books. We don't even know who is the author of that book. So we had what we have in the 21st century in the West. Today we are using a term like authorless text. We have in Sanskrit a Purusheya. A Purusheya is the authorless text. So what is coming there today is there in our culture. But I told you we don't have content. Our youngsters have lost all this content. We don't know much about the West, we don't know much about India. I recently went to Spain. They told us the history from 11th century. You know, this is the 21st century. That means 10 centuries history, young people like you who are guides. They are able to tell every history, every building they take us and they tell us. I felt very sad for Indians. I said that we have such brilliant boys and girls in our country, but nobody will be able to do such a job. It is not as though they are better than us. They are able to tell us, how did the Moors come? What did they build? How did the Spanish rulers send away the Moors from their country? How the country was united? Thousand years history. Do we have? We don't have an awareness at all. So that is why I told you that your communication improves with awareness. So when I'm reading these stories, I want to, you to become aware of your real life situation. What is happening to all of you in real life? If you have a question, please ask. Any question? Please ask. Anybody who wants to ask, please feel free to ask. Okay, anything you want to discuss. Now we move to group three. Group three, get ready. I hope the other groups are also listening and you are following the story because I saw when some people said dependence on media is good, the audience was saying, no, no, this is not correct. I felt very happy that, okay, the audience who are not talking about this story are also listening. That gives a lot of satisfaction that the whole group is participating in every story. I'm using this story to activate your experiences. One or two students, the last boy especially, they gave their own experiences. That is wonderful. You know, that is where we want the ability to come. You know, you can clap for him. The ability to think in an active manner, to relate to totally different things. I am telling you stories of Sri Ramakrishna. Long back, all this was not there. No media, social media was there. No computers were there. No travel was there. Means of communication were very low. He stayed only in one place. He was born in one place. He lived in another place. So he saw these two places. But imagine, it was his experience without physically experiencing. Similarly, you are experiencing so much. When you see a movie which is not of your culture, 
you learn about that country. When you see something or read a book which is not something which you are familiar with, you learn something new. Correlating all this, we become a completely new individual. We become innovative. You know, everybody will ask you for innovations. Today, a degree is not important. Another 20, 30 years later, the degree will take secondary place. Your originality, your innovation, these will be important. Therefore, you have to think differently. And if you start using these stories, these stories are just like the core. You know, you have to go around it. You have to think a lot around it.